The Burns have, have captured the heart of what's happening in our culture today. And that is this uh, hunger to build an identity, to, to be of value, to be of worth. And that's the key element of the story of this show. here is a story that is action adventure it's got a love interest it's got a, a historical setting that's it's fascinating time of, of, of history where so much is happening and yet beneath that uh, there's a lot more going on there's a depth to it that it's, it's fascinating because it's exploring uh, themes of, of redemption and atonement it's exploring uh, through our characters how a man can get lost in who he is and what he's doing we are able to explore how a man finds himself again and what he bases that on. We were able to look at themes like relationship. What is, what is love and what, is, what does it mean as you play that out in that context? It's also uh, about doing the right things for the wrong reasons and doing the right things for the right reasons and how that impacts the people around you and, and how it impacts our character. And, and to me, the, it's, it's at that level that we're telling a very unique story. We're telling something uh, in a film version that I don't remember anybody else doing. Uh, so it's very new, it's very fresh. This is a story that follows William Reynolds and his journey of seeking out who he really is. Is he an assassin? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Things that we generally actually struggle with every day, all of those little issues and circumstances that we think shape us as human beings, this movie attempts to address that question, what is it that defines you? What is it that makes you who you are? The idea for Beyond the Mask, for this story about identity, about who you are, who we are on the inside, this really came out of what the Lord was teaching Chad and I as we walked with him over the course of several years. You know, our journey brought us to realize that we all wear masks and we create these elaborate masks that we present to the world that manipulate others in our effort to satisfy our hunger for significance. Now, in wearing these masks, we strive to do enough good deeds to overcome, to cover the brokenness that we have in our lives. And this is exactly why we need the gospel. The Lord taught us that we don't have to work hard to be good enough, that Jesus has already done that work for us. And as we accept the redemption he offers, we have hope for the future. And in this life here, we can take off those masks and live out who we are in him. And that theme of hope and identity and redemption through Christ is really the backbone of the story. We wanted to take those themes and find a setting where they could really come alive through actual, true-to-life characters who struggle in the same way that we struggle today. And we said, what better place to set this story than at a time when our nation itself was finding its own identity, with an assassin who's working on his own personal journey of redemption to find his own identity. Beyond the Mask is set in 1776, in the midst of all of that turmoil and the boiling of, of emotions and the English and the American leading up to July 4th. Well, when I first read the script of Beyond the Mask, I was really taken by the action-adventure story. You know, it's, a, it's quite a story, a hero story. We wanted to find someone who could work with us and take these ideas and concepts and weave it into an emotionally powerful, compelling, and fun script. And who better than Paul McCusker, the creator of the Adventures and Odyssey program? Chad and I and our families listened to Adventures growing up, and we just loved the characters he created. So we had an opportunity to sit down and talk with Paul about some of these ideas. I'm often approached by people who want to make movies, and, and so far I haven't really taken on the jobs because most of the time the ideas just aren't that compelling to me. They're sort of what you would expect, especially in a, uh, from a Christian uh, filmmaker. And I, so I, I haven't really engaged in that, but when, when Chad and Aaron came to me and said they'd like uh, me to work with them on this film, uh, I was reticent. But then they told me what the idea was. They kind of gave me the premise of what they were after. And it was so unique and so fresh and so unexpected, I thought, I really have to be part of this. And I think when you watch the film, you'll see that the characters have many of the same qualities you see in those who are written for Adventures in Odyssey. We also had the privilege of working with Stephen Kendrick, the co-writer of War Room, Courageous, and Fireproof. He came alongside of us and looked at the spiritual scenes and the romantic scenes and really just helped draw out an extra level of emotional quality and really bring clarity to some of those key moments in the story. 
I have a feeling that our interests in the American colonies could match or even exceed our revenues from India. This is a very good script. The characters are strong. The intentions are profound. And it is a moral story. You follow Will as he's literally putting on masks uh, to hide what he's doing. In a mask, was he? Well, we can make of that what we will. He's trying to use his performance to justify his identity. I've been trying to become the man that is, that is somehow worthy of you. Rather than what God created him to do and who God created him for. I fooled myself into thinking that I could be a good man. We're all trying to achieve that. We're all trying to gain that precious love and worth and value from someone. But we all know we can't get there. And the film is going to present that desperation, yet it's going to answer it. Don't you know that neither redemption or love can ever be earned? They're both gifts. Gifts to be granted freely from the heart of God. And this is where the good news of the gospel comes in. Titus 3.5 explains that it's not by works that we've done in an attempt to become righteous, but it's God and His mercy that saves us. And if we accept that and turn from living for ourselves and put our trust in Him, God creates in us a new identity in Christ Jesus. And it's far better than anything we could find in this world. And that's the good news that Beyond the Mask shares. I have strived in vain to redeem my name. But God, in His mercy, He's done the work that I could never do. He's redeemed my name and He's given me His. I think it's important for, for people to relate to a character's humanity, and I think the script did a good job of, of bringing that in to the role. So this journey of redemption, we felt, was best set in the revolutionary time period when America was a rapidly changing nation. And we wanted characters to feel real and not out of place in some far-fetched mythical environment, so we took to the history books and really did our research to find true events and places in which a context in which our characters could thrive. So in Beyond the Mask, we take these true elements of history and we play with them. We say, what would happen if our protagonist actually had a hand to play in some of the most well-known events of the founding of our nation? In the middle of the 1700s, the large British East India Company storms onto the scene. They are manipulating grain prices in India, they're diverting the revenue of entire Indian states, they steal, they rape, they pillage, and they have a trade monopoly on tea in the American colonies. Fearful of their tactics, colonists wind up throwing East India Company tea into the harbor in an event we know as the Boston Tea Party. So there's real foundation and real motivation for the East India Company to take action. And our hero begins his journey as an enforcer, an assassin for this company. And uh, it's not a big stretch to imagine that the East India Company might set its sights on the American colonies to destroy or derail the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is going to have a significant financial impact on their bottom line. Assassination attempt on General George Washington's life. Now, people typically think of presidential assassinations. You think much more forward in time to uh, Lincoln or Reagan. But reports say that someone from the British East India Company, among others, was involved in this assassination attempt. Uh, they were actually planted in Washington's own bodyguard. And at the same time, they were uh, burying bombs under key strategic bridges and locations all around the city in an attempt to destroy the Continental Army. And eventually, the future uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court nation plot, and we wove it in with the work that Ben Franklin had done, uh, creating what was known actually as the first battery. Basically, they were taking these glass jars called Leiden jars, and they were storing electrostatic charge in them and Franklin discovered that he could link these together in a series to create a much larger charge. And this is true history. It may seem anachronistic to a younger viewer, but uh, Franklin actually did this stuff. He actually created generators in the jars and everything. And so we wove that into the plot to derail the colony's quest for independence. We were intrigued by the mystery surrounding the now non-existent Windmill Island, but it once stood in the city of Philadelphia. Built underneath Windmill Island was the hull of a sunken ship. In our story, Charles Kemp's electrostatic generator chamber offers one explanation for the windmill's intended purpose in its mysterious destruction by fire. These facts and concepts were really the framework of the story of what might have been in Beyond the Mask.